A very good evening and a warm welcome to State of Business on Art Television. I'm Mariam Vijayaratna. Let's have a look at the headlines first. JICA highlights a discussion on economic reforms between Japan and Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka's influencer program resonates in emerging European markets, Tourism Promotion Bureau says. News in detail. Dr. Tanaka Akiko, the president of Japan International Cooperation Agency, met with President Rani Vikramasinghe to discuss critical matters regarding economic reform and cooperation between Japan and Sri Lanka. The meeting was held at the presidential secretariat yesterday. During the meeting, Dr. Akiko expressed gratitude towards President Vikramasinghe for his unwavering commitment to the economic reform program, acknowledging the challenges it represents. President Vikramasinghe reiterated on swiftly resuming investment projects, including the expansion of Bandar Naik International Airport, the light rail transit system, and the Central Expressway. The President also expressed deep appreciation for the continuous support provided by the Government of Japan and JICA during Sri Lanka's economic crisis. Dr. Akihiko elaborated on JICA's ongoing efforts emphasizing the importance of concluding debt restructuring and prioritizing the resumption of stall projects. President Vikramasinghe was accompanied by his senior advisor on national security, Sagalarat Nayaka, and the Director of International Affairs, Dino Kolambage. Chairman of the Sri Lanka Tourism Promotion Bureau, Chalaka Gajabahu, highlighted the success of Influencer Program in promoting Sri Lanka in emerging European markets, revealing plans to expand the Influencer Program with a category-based approach. The Chairman of the Sri Lanka Tourism Promotion Bureau said this at a press conference held in Colombo on Wednesday. This influencer program, we have taken it very seriously. As much as you are doing a global campaign, I know all of you are briefed on what's going on with the global campaign. First phase is running right now in certain markets. The second, the main campaign will come out in March, early April. Uh, and that is also, as you know, Ogilvy is appointed as the creative and strategic partner. And all the new tender notices have gone out for the PR and the uh, digital okay. campaign. That's also now all under control. It's going according to the plan that we planned it uh, six months ago, uh, going very well. Uh, coming back to the influencer campaign, as you know, we had Nas Daily last November. As of na now, Nas Daily has reached an audience of 25 million globally. It's still going on. It is just a matter of two months, he has reached uh, 25 million. Uh, in fact, last week, we had another blogger who is into culinary, uh, Luke Martin. Last time when he visited Sri Lanka, he did a couple of videos which reached over 30 million people within a matter of a year or so. His three videos will come out in about two weeks' time. And we are not going to stop there. So now we are going to be category, category specific. Nas Daily is more uh, vast, as in like in more, for the more global market. Now we are going to go category specific from, from where they come, when it comes to adventure, uh, culinary, uh, history, romance, wellness. Talking about wellness, there has been a project that we've been working with the European Union uh, for the past one and a half years or so. Uh, we are going to get on the wellness platform 30 wellness influencers from France and Germany. This is a project between uh, Sri Lanka Tourism Promotion Bureau and the European Union. Speaking at the press conference, Tourism Promotion Bureau Chief Gajabahu also said that the Bureau is set to enter into agreements with a consortium of global brands, both foreign and domestic, to sponsor a promote series of exciting events throughout the country. We had a very successful meeting today in the morning. Uh, not only the multinational brands in Sri Lanka, but local brands that are going out to the international market. So we are going to have, have a, a kind of a combination of these brands where they will partner accordingly. Let's say if it's a water festival, what brands should be associated with? If it's a cultural show, what brands that can you know communicate and engage with us? So it's going to grow, and uh, hopefully this consortium will be formed with about 20 companies, uh, multinationally and Sri Lanka, to take this platform to a different level because we don't want to play a game because we need a team of 11 or 20 or whatever it is to take the country forward. You know, it might not be cricket, it's Olympics. So now we have to go to that level, get together, not as a single partner, not only with the hotel association and the uh, travel association. We need to get involved with the brands that in Sri Lanka, Sri Lankan brands and multinational brands who can take us even further, uh, taking this forward. For example, we are planning a water uh, related uh, festival hopefully in uh, uh, 
starting in middle of March, going up to about middle of April with these brands, how to show that water-wise, you know, water sports from kite surfing to uh, underwater uh, diving to a lot of things. We want to have this festival, uh, do it with these brands and take it globally and promote it globally as well. And at the same time, we have a special project for Seagri as well. It will be one of a kind. Hopefully, we can launch this that we are planning to do it in July. Uh, for the first time, it will be done in a project like this in Seagria. I can't reveal the details right now, but it's going to be a good surprise. Stay tuned. We'll be right back after this short commercial break. Welcome back after the break. The press briefing held for the 73rd Air Force Anniversary Celebration and Air Tattoo and Exhibition 2024 unveiled several initiatives planned by the Sri Lanka Air Force to commemorate its anniversary focusing on the Northern Province. The press briefing featuring the Air Force Commander Air Marshal Udeni Rajapaksha was held in Colombo recently. This year, the SLAF has decided to celebrate its anniversary in the northern province under the theme Wings of Friendship. The AR Tattoo 2024 Educational and Technical Exhibition will be held in Jaffna, featuring participation from state and private universities, schools and technical institutions. This initiative aims to promote quality education and environmental sustainability in line with the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Sub-projects include renovating 73 schools, donating 73,000 books and planting 73,000 saplings in the northern province. The Guan Hamuda Papadi Savaria 2024, a cycling race, will cover distance of over 650 kilometers for men and close to 100 kilometers for women, starting from Colombo and ending in Jaffna. Additionally, the Air Force Commander's Cup Challenge Friendly Football Tournament 2024 has commenced in Kilinochi, aiming to identify young, talented footballers. Addressing the press briefing, Air Force Commander Air Marshal Udeni Rajapaksha said that the Air Force has planned several additions to its fleet, mainly focused on maintaining peace in the Indian Ocean region to aid and sustain the development in Sri Lanka. The Sri Lanka Air Force actually have launched several programs to induct technology and aircraft into the Sri Lanka Air Force. We already have requested uh, two C-130s from US Air Force. We are negotiating with them to get a newer model than what we already have in our inventory. So that is been discussed. And in addition to that, I should uh, say we already brought two Chinese brand new Y-12 aircraft that we uh, prepare those two aircraft to be utilized in tourism development in the country, right? And also, we are going to get two Beach King aircraft, uh, one from US and one from uh, Australia, Beach King uh, 360 ER and also 350 from Australia. So that basically we will utilize those aircraft for maritime domain awareness. So if you look at the future, as you said, when you look at the future, we need to understand what kind of challenges that we will have to face in the future. One of the most significant challenges is the, the threat that we see in the ocean environment. The Indian Ocean peace is one of the key elements for the sustainable development of our country. Therefore, it is our most responsibility as the Sri Lanka Air Force, as the guardians of the sky, we need to protect the Indian Ocean airspace. The Transparency in Corporate Reporting Assessment conducted by Transparency International Sri Lanka has revealed significant progress in corporate transparency practices among Sri Lankan public limited companies. This was revealed at a press conference hosted by Transparency International Sri Lanka yesterday. John Keels, TJ, Ceylon Tobacco, Dialogue Axiata and Dilma has achieved the highest scores for Transparency in Corporate Reporting marking a five-way tie for the first place. The average scores of companies assessed in the Track 2023 report increased to 5.85 out of 10, indicating an overall improvement compared to the previous year. 
Companies were scored on a scale of 0 to 10 with categories ranging from fully transparent to least transparent based on the level of transparency in their corporate disclosures. The assessment utilized publicity available information and companies were given the opportunity to provide feedback on their initial scores. While a high score reflects strong disclosure mechanism, it does not necessarily indicate operational success in anti-corruption programs. Although at present this is still the listing rules uh, coming to effect in October this year, uh, still since, it's, since there is no mandatory requirement for them to disclose all the information that we look at and assess in this report, it's actually very encouraging to see that several companies are, man are voluntarily disclosing all this information. So the report provides detailed recommendations uh, for companies. There's a separate section on recommendations uh, to companies on how to improve their disclosure practices, uh, which would lead to better scores as well. And uh, I encourage companies to use the track report as guidance to improve their corporate disclosures. Stay tuned, we'll be right back with the stock updates. Welcome back after the break. Trading at Colombo Stock Exchange ended on a positive note today. The All Share Price Index gained 17.65 points to close at 10,586.11 and the S&P SL20 gained 13.28 points to close at 3,048.63. The turnover was 1.3 billion rupees and over 41 million shares were traded. Up next are Forex rates. That's all we have for tonight. For this and more, subscribe to our channel on YouTube and follow us on Facebook. Have a